Hello, I am back with a new video. Please press bell icon to subscribe to my channel Seema Gautam for more videos. Here in this module, we are going to learn about resources and development geography chapter of grade 10 CBSE. What we are going to learn in this module we are going to learn what are resources classification of resources development of resources problems created by indiscriminate use of resources by man sustainable development and agenda 21 resource planning in india and soils in india here we'll start with what are resources so everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our needs is called a uh, resources it should be technologically accessible, economically feasible, and culturally acceptable. Only then it can be termed as resource. So when you're writing your definition in board exam or your school exam, don't forget to write accessible, techno uh, technologically accessible, economically feasible, and culturally acceptable. These keywords should be there. Examples, minerals, forests, fossils, fuels, etc. Here we'll just go ahead with the classification of the resources. So classification of, of the resources when we are seeing it's a natural and man-made renewable, non-renewable structures and all. So on the basis of origin, on the basis of exhaustibility, on the basis of ownership, uh, on the basis of status and development. So we are going to learn the classification of resources or types of resources so when we are saying on the basis of origin that is a biotic and abiotic when we are saying on the basis of exhaustibility that is renewable and non-renewable on the basis of ownership that is individual community national and international and on the basis of development that is potential developed stocks and reserves we are going to learn in detail about this. So first we said on the basis of origin. So biotic is the one. So biotic resources are obtained from the biosphere that is living and organic material such as forest and animal and the materials that can be obtained from them. A biotic when we are saying a biotic resources are those that come from non-living, non-organic material next we will learn about the on the basis of exhaustibility so in this renewable and non-renewable first we will discuss about the renewable renewable resources are one that can be replenished naturally some of these resources like sunlight air etc are continuously available and the quantity is not noticeably affected by human consumption when we are discussing about the non-renewable resources a natural resource such as coal gas or oil that once consumes cannot be replaced most energy resources currently in use are non-renewable then nature can create them we're going to learn about the third one that is on the basis of ownership in this individual resources are there community owned resources are there national international so first we will discuss about the individual resources individual resources are those resources which are owned by an individual and can't be accessed by someone else example land property houses cars etc so your own house your own car it's your individual resource when we are discussing the next that is community owned resources community resources are group of assistance program that are provided to members of the community for free public parks uh, garden etc you can see uh, nearby your society that public gardens are there uh, parks are there where anyone can go and access those next is the natural resources all the resources belong to the nation the country has legal power to acquire even private property for public good Urban development authorities get empowered by the government to acquire land. Next, we are going to learn the international resources. All the resources lying beyond 200 km of exclusive economic zone in the oceans are called the international resources. Like ocean is such a big and it's a part of 
many of the neighboring countries and all so no individual country can use it without the permission of the international agencies here i have shared one picture which you can see it is a example of your individual resources this is the like car is there your house is there this is your individual resource is there another one when we are discussing this is you can see as a picture of park or you can see the garden so this is a community owned resources anybody can go the any age group can go and can use this here now photo and we'll discuss on the basis of the status of the development so here is like potential resources developed resources stocks resources reserved resources so first we'll discuss about the potential resources these are the resources which are found in a region but have not been utilized Uh, example rajasthan and gujarat have enormous potential for the development of wind and solar energy but so far these have not been developed properly second one is a developed resources resources which are surveyed and their quality and quantity have been determined for utilization the development of resources depends on the technology and the level of their feasibility next we are going to discuss the stock resources material in the environment which have the potential to satisfy human needs but human beings do not have the appropriate technology to access are called the stock resources uh, example hydrogen can be used as a rich, uh, source of energy but we do not have advanced technology to use it the last we are learning the reserve resources reserves are the subset of the stock which can be put into use uh, with the help of existing technical know how but their use has not been started this can be used to meet future requirements here we can take example like water in the dams forest etc is a reserve which can be used in the future so here we will discuss about the development of resources so with increasing population the demand for the resources is increasing there are marked differences in the resources distribution as associated economic inequality between regions or countries with developed countries using more natural resources than developed countries typically resources uh, cannot be consumed in their original form but rather through resource development they must be processed into more usable commodities so with the development of the resources here we will learn the problems created by the indiscriminate use of resources by man so many resources got depleted uh, here we can take as an example like forest is there resources got accumulated in the hands of few people the society is divided into rich and poor then global warming ozone layer depletion environmental degradations are other problems which are there or coming under this next we are going to learn about the sustainable development and agenda 21 so sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the availability of the future generation to meet their needs sustainable development constantly seeks to achieve social and economic progress in ways that will not exhaust the earth finite natural resources here the agenda 21 is important over here and uh, like how it helps so agenda 21 is uh, i'll just give brief about it agenda 21 is non binding action plan of the united nations which regarded the sustainable development it is a product of earth summit held in rio de janeiro in brazil in 1992 so this agenda 21 is comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally nationally and locally by organization of the united nations system government and major groups in every area in which human impacts on the uh, environment after this we will discuss the resource 
planning in India, how we are planning the resources in India. So resources planning is a complex process which involves uh, identification and inventory of resources across the regions of the country. This involves surveying, mapping and qualitative and the quantitative estimation and measures of the resources, evolving a plan structure inbound, uh, endowed with appropriate technology skill and institutional setup for implementing resources development plans matching the resources development plans with the overall national development plans then uh, next like uh, resources can contribute to development only when they are accompanied by the appropriate technological development and institutional changes india has made uh, concentrated efforts toward achieving the goals of resources planning right from the first five years plan launch after independence uh, to overcome irrational consumption and the over utilization of resources, resources conservation at various level is important. So we will move further and discuss the land resources, one of the very important resources. So this is a natural resources of utmost importance. It supports natural vegetation, wildlife, human life, economic activities, transport and communication system. India has land under a variety of relief features, namely uh, mountain, plateaus, plains, islands as shown in this pie chart. You can see 43% plains, 30% mountain, 27% plateau. So this is a land resources in India. After the land resources, we'll discuss the utilization of land. So land resources are used for following purposes. So one is a forest, another land not available for the cultivation. Under this, like barren and uh, waste land is coming. Then the land put it uh, to non-agriculture uses. Uh, another one is a fallow land. Then the next is other uh, uncultivated lands. In this, excluding fallow lands. And next one is a net shown area is also there, which is coming under this. All the keywords I have mentioned here, and you can just use all these uh, keywords in your answer. After the uh, land resources and utilization, we will discuss the land use pattern in India. So the use of land is determined like physical factors such as the topography, climate, soil, climate, soil types and all. So, soil types we'll discuss uh, in the next slides and all. And then the human factors are there such as the population density, technological capability and the culture and traditions etc. After discussing the land uh, resources and all we will discuss land degradation and conservation measures here so human activities such as the deforestation overgrazing mining and quarrying have contributed significantly to land degradation mining sites leave uh, deep scares and traces on overburdening the land in recent years industrial influence as waste have become a major source of land and water pollution in many parts of the country. Some of the ways through which we can solve the problem of land degradations are afforestation and uh, proper uh, management of grazing, planting of shelter bells, plants of plants, uh, stabilization of sand dunes by growing thorny bushes, proper management of wasteland, control of mining activities, proper discharge and disposal of industrial influence and waste after treatments. So after discussing about the land resources in detail, here uh, we'll just discuss soil, about the soil, soil as a resource. So soil is the most important renewable res natural resources. It is a medium of plant growth and they support different types of living organisms on the earth. It takes million of years to form soil up to few centimeters in depth. You can see soil profile picture on your screen. Various forces of nature such as the changes in temperature, action of running water, wind and glaciers, activities of decomposers, etc. Contribute to the formation of soil. 
parent rock or bedrock climate vegetation and other forms of life and time are important factors in the formation of soil chemical and organic changes which take place in the soil play an important role over here we will discuss about now the first soil that is a alluvial soil alluvial soil that uh, the entire northern plains are made of alluvial soil alluvial soil is uh, deposited by the three important himalayan river system that is indus ganga and brahmaputra it is also found in rajasthan gujarat and eastern coastal plains particularly in the deltas of the mahanadi the godavari the krishna and the kaveri rivers alluvial soil consists of various uh, proportions of sand silt and clay as we move in land towards the river valleys soil part uh, particles appear to be bigger in size whereas in upper side of the river valleys the soil are coarse so you can see here again i have shared the keywords like uh, crops like rice wheat sugarcane jutes are growing in this type of uh, soil we are moving further and discussing about the alluvial soil only means based on age so alluvial soil can be classified as the old alluvium that is bhangar and the new alluvial that is khadar so it uh, khadar if we are talking so it has more fine particles and it is more fertile than the bhangar and the uh, bhangar if we are discussing when this is called even old alluvial this bhangar soil has a higher concentration of kankar nodules than the khadar alluvial soils are very fertile these soils contain an adequate proportion of potash phosphoric acid lime which are ideal for the growth of as i said in my previous slide for uh, sugarcane paddy wheat and other cereals and pulses crops next we will discuss about the next soil that is the black soil the soil uh, black soil in color and is also known as the regular soil climatic condition if we discuss about the this along with the parent rock and materials are important factors for the formation of black soil uh, the soil is ideal for growing cotton and is also known as black cotton soil this type of soil is typical of the deccan trap that is basalt region spread over the northwest deccan plateau and is made up of lava flows the soil covers the plateaus of maharashtra Saurashtra, Malwa, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and extends in the southeast directions along the Godavari and Krishna valleys. The black soils are made up of the extremely fine, that is, clay material, and are well known for their capacity to hold moisture. Black soil is nutrients rich and contains the calcium carbonate, magnesium, potash, and lime. the soil is sticky when wet and difficult to work on unless uh, tilled immediately after the first shower of during the pre monsoon periods and all next is a red and the yellow soil so this type of soil develops on crystalline uh, igneous igneous rocks in areas of low rainfall in the eastern and the southern parts of the deccan plateau the soils develop a reddish color due to the uh, diffusion of uh, iron in crystalline and uh, metamorphic rocks it looks yellow when it occur in a hydrated form found in parts of orissa chatisgarh southern parts of middle ganga plains and along the piedmont zone of the western ghats so after red and yellow we are going to discuss about the laterite soil the laterite soil develops under the tropical and subtropical climates with the alternate wet and dry season this soil is result of the intense leaching due to the heavy rain laterite soil are acidic in nature and generally deficient in the plant nutrients this type of soil is found mostly in the southern states western ghats region of maharashtra orissa 
some parts of west bengal and north east regions the soil supports a uh, deciduous and evergreen forest but humus po uh, poor so this soil is very useful for growing the tea and coffee cashew rubber etc so after the laterite soil we are going to discuss the next one that is our arid soil arid soils range from red to brown in color this soil is generally sandy in texture and saline in nature in some areas the salt contained is very high and common salt is obtained by the evaporating the water arid soil lacks humus and moisture uh, the lower horizons of the soil are occupied by the kanker because of the increasing calcium content downwards the kanker layer formation in the bottom horizons restrict the infiltration of the water next is a forest soil these soils are found in the hilly and mountainous areas the soil texture is loamy and silty on the valley sides and coarse grain on the upper slopes in the snow covered areas of the himalayas these soils experiences uh, denudation and are acidic and low humus contain the soil is fertile on the river terraces and alluvial fans so i have discussed uh, forest and mountainous uh, soil with you i have discussed the alluvial soil i have discussed the red soil yellow soil black soil laterite soil and the arid soil with you all this is a map which you can refer for map marking now we will discuss about the soil erosion and soil conservation so the denudation of the soil cover the subsequent washing down is described as a soil erosion the soil erosion is caused due to the human activities like deforestation overgrazing constructions and mining etc also there are some natural forces like wind glacier and water which lead to soil erosion soil erosion is also caused due to the defective methods of farming as well so after the soil erosion and soil conservation here i'll just discuss two types of erosions with you the rainwater which moves down on uneven land scoops away the soil and form the deep channels called the gullies the type of erosion is called the gully erosion a land which is broken into many small parts by the gullies is called bad land a bad land is unfit for the cultivation and for other economic activities second one is sheet erosion sometimes water flows as a sheet over large areas down a slope the water takes away the top soil this type of erosion is called sheet erosion so after discussing about the soil erosion and conservation now we will discuss the different ways for soil conservation here so plowing along the contour lines uh decelerate the flows of water down to the slope this is called the contour plowing uh then the terrace cultivation that restricts erosion this type of agriculture practice is done in the western and central himalayas another one like when a large field is divided into strips and strips of grass are left to grow between the crops then this breaks up the force of the wind this method is known as the strip cropping at all then planting lines of trees to create shelter helps in the uh, stabilization of sand dunes and stabilizing the desert in the western india rows of such trees are called the shelter belts then all these are the one uh, the ways for the soil conservations and all so keep learning and stay tuned for more updates on cbc icsc and ncert please like share comment and subscribe my youtube channel to access more interactive videos on social science topics thank you so much